21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Masak, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands. They have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, and carts upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priest and Levites, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm Let your response be Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify Him, all you peoples. Response Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness toward us and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Response Go out to all the world and tell the good news. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed but healed. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, We ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. The theme of the readings, Who Will Be Saved? How often do you ask yourself about the condition of your soul and the likelihood of your eternal salvation? As a society, we are too often overly concerned with our accumulation of material goods and do not concern ourselves with the imperishable works that will follow the righteous into eternity. How seriously do we consider that we might not be preparing our souls for the eternal judgment we all must face? This question is a serious matter in a time when many professing Christians do not go to confession or even attend worship on the Lord's Day. Giving God worship, renouncing sin, offering penance, and conversion continues as integral parts of the biblical message to every generation. Eternal salvation is the destiny God plans for all of us, but how many will be willing to do what is necessary to fulfill that destiny? Today's first reading is from the prophet Isaiah's eschatological, and times, discourse when he prophesies that in the messianic age, all nations of the earth will repent and convert to the worship of the one true God. And, as an offering to God, 
the converted Gentiles will restore the dispersed Jews to Jerusalem. The new Israel of the new covenant church that welcomed all Gentile nations of the earth into an universal family of Jesus the Messiah fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy. Many have also seen the United Nations recreating the state of Israel in 1947 and opening a way for all the world's Jews displaced by World War II to have a nation as a further fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. A Jewish state called Israel had not existed since the Assyrians exiled the ten northern tribes of Israel in 722 BC. The recreation of Israel was indeed a miracle. In the second reading, the inspired writer reminds the Jewish Christians of his times and us today that God loves us. Even when we suffer chastisement because of our sins, these corrections are signs of God's fatherly love and concern for his children. Our loving Heavenly Father is not a permissive parent, he is a righteous father who expects the best from his children. A holy God deserves holy children. The Gospel reading reminds us that, from the beginning of God's relationship with humanity, his gift of free will has always given men and women a choice between two paths or two gates forward slash doors. All humankind has the option to travel the way of obedience and fellowship with God that leads to eternal life or to go one's own way without God and follow a path that leads to eternal separation from our Divine Father. Jesus offers the same teaching in today's Gospel reading that there are two paths in life, the narrow path and the wide path. At first, the broad path seems appealing because it calls for no standard of conduct. It is the more traveled path, but it leads to sin, judgment, separation from God, and eternal punishment. The other choice is the narrow, less traveled, more challenging path that requires spiritual strength to stay on course, but it leads to fellowship with the Lord and eternal salvation. God does not desire that any should perish and that all should come to salvation. It is the destiny He planned for us from the moment of our conception in our mother's wombs. However, the Lord does not force us. Like every person in salvation history, you must determine your ultimate destination, there is no middle ground, and the choice is entirely yours.